Mr. Holt, please raise your right hand to be sworn. Do you swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to provide will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? I do. Thank you. You may lower your hand, sir. Is it true that you tested positive for cocaine on February 15th and February 29th of 2024, sir? Yes. Thank you. I find that there's a knowing will and admission to the violation. Are you, you satisfied, Ms. McDuffie? Yes, Your Honor. Ms. Ms. Muller. Uh, yes, Your Honor. Thank you. All right. As to the pretrial. Your Honor, I would um, request if we could, I know there was the original date of the 21st, I believe. I don't know if we could just keep that on the docket and adjourn today out until then so that Mr. Holt has a chance to speak with Mr. Lebo and uh, make a plan for that date. Were you trying to say something, Mr. Holt? I'm sorry? I thought you said, um, I... No, no, ma'am. Okay, thank you. Yes, I can do that. We will adjourn the pretrial. Pretrials continue to... March 21st, 2024, at 9 a.m. Discontinue. Okay. Sorry, Your Honor. Um, did you say, will the sentencing for this be set out for the 21st as well? I'm leaving his bond as it is, which is a 10,010% at this time. So okay, so the court won't. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Um, I did have just some mitigating information I wanted to provide to the court, but if will the court you not can. consider altering bond? You you can you can give me whatever mitigating information you may have. Um, Your Honor, Mr. Holt was just very clear to me that he is struggling with substance abuse, but he does feel like this really was a wake up call to him. I think he was picked up, you know, directly from the um last positive test, and um, he said for him just the kind of the really guilt he feels from my understanding his fiance is in really poor health um she suffers from strokes uh, or no seizures he said i'm sorry um and this just really he feels very guilty he said that was the wake up call he guaranteed at least to me and to to the court that he will not drop or test positive again um he is willing to get help for his substance abuse issues he said that he has an assessment scheduled at don farms with um or out of community corrections with don farms on wednesday um so he was planning on doing that um, he is working. Um, he works at Red Oak Inn at Belleville. He does need to continue to make money. He said he's pretty um, close, a year and a half out from paying his house off. So um, he would like, if, if able, to uh, make the plan to get substance abuse treatment, to keep working, paying off his house, helping with his, his family and his home life. Thank you. Ms. McDuffie, response? I appreciate Mr. Holt at least admitting that he has a problem. My concern is that, first of all, the underlying circumstances of this case, I'm obviously not asking him to comment on them, but this the charge itself, this is a um, operating with the presence of a controlled substance, which was cocaine, his second offense, his prior was um, reduced, I think, from that same count just in 2020. This case involves cra a crash into a school bus with children on board and another vehicle. And cocaine was one of one, two, three, four five substances in the system at that time. Part of his violation for community corrections was failure to submit a prescription. At least one substance might be explained with a prescription. I don't know that they have that documentation yet, but obviously cocaine is the biggest issue here. I am concerned about his, I'm concerned about his health, her and the whole communities. Because Mr. Holt, um, I think that the original incident crashing into a bus would have probably been a significant wake up call but just this last positive test representing him now being, I guess, willing and able to engage in some treatment. I'm concerned that it took that to cause that effect. And I don't know how ready Mr. Hope really is um, to commit to that. I'm concerned about him continuing to drive. I'm concerned about him as a danger to everyone, including himself. So I think the bond that is currently set is very reasonable considering all of that. Thank you. Ms. Muller, could you hear me? I, I can, Your Honor. I'm sorry. There's a lot of feedback, but I can't hear. Your client has his hand raised. Do you want to allow him to get this? Mr. Holt, I would just advise to really not speak to any of the underlying charges. I'd be very careful. If you have any um, mitigating information as far as your bond, you can share that with the court, but I wouldn't say anything beyond that at this time, okay? 
Do you have anything related to your bond to express to the court? Um, I was just about the Suboxone prescription. I, I had, I did call my doctor and I guess that it was my fault for assuming that they had taken care of that because no one at Community Corrections never said anything to me about it, uh, about that. It had never been uh, faxed over from my doctor. I just wanted to say that, that, that and I apologize for that. All right. Thank you, sir. Well, given the allegations of the underlying offense in this case and the continued violations, the court is extremely concerned and I'm not willing to reduce the bond any further at this time. Um, I find that 10,000, 10% in light of the bond violations is fair. Um, so I'm gonna leave it as is. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. We'll see you then, Mr. Holt. State of Michigan versus no tax pets, case number. State of Michigan versus Natasha Hetz, case number 22S00386. Rachel Lee, Deputy for the People. Assistant Public Defender Sandra White on behalf of Natasha Hetz. Ms. Natasha Hetz, she had been here for the longest. Ms. Natasha Hetz. Shoot. Hello. Hello, Ms. Hetz. Please state Hello, your how are you doing today? Good, how are you? I'm doing good. Could you please state <laughs> your name for me, please? Sorry, Natasha Hetz. Thank you. All right, so Ms. Hetz, um, I guess I need to arrange you on your, uh, on your uh, probation violation. Ms. Hetz, it is alleged that you violated the no contact order in this case on February 18, 2024 by having contact with James Moore in case report number 2412668. Um, apparently you hadn't mentioned this contact to the probation either as of February 23rd, 2024. You're entitled to have a hearing on this matter at which time if it is found that you violated the terms of your probation, you could have your probation revoked. The recommendation at this time is to have you take another class. And if, um, and from what I know right now, I would follow that recommendation. You're entitled to have a hearing, like I said, or if you admit, if you're found guilty or you admit, you could have uh, um, those additional penalties imposed. Ms. White, do you know what your client would like to do? Uh, Ms. Hetz wishes to admit to the violation. Thank you, Ms. Hetz. Please raise your right hand to be sworn. Do you swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to provide will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. You may lower your hand. Ma'am, is it true that you had contact with Mr. James Moore on February 18, 2024, in violation of the no contact provision of your probation, and you failed to mention this to the probation department? Yes, ma'am find that there's a knowing rule and admission to the violation. Are you satisfied, Ms. McDuffie? Yes, Your Honor. Satisfied. Thank you. All right, as to sentencing, have you had a chance to go to the report with your client? I have, Your Honor. We ask that you accept the recommendation. Anything from the people? I'm really concerned about uh, this report. I was already concerned about Ms. Hetz, obviously, when we started. Um, I was hoping that things were going to go well because Ms. Hetz um, had kind of hedged when she took the plea and, and um, there was more background about her continued contact and more damage caused to this victim's vehicle after the case she pled on. And uh, he had, I think, what was, a, I think, an impactful sentencing and plea when the judge said some very, I think, important words to Ms. Hetz about her getting what she needs to full support it and um, to appreciate herself and her own self-worth. 
this report has a lot of things in it that really challenge my confidence that she's going to be able to get what she needs out of this probation process because this is not just seeking out the victim denied who she was to police um it, it just, she created a scene i think at this establishment but then provided an excuse about just happening to be there um and not knowing if he was going to be there and couldn't back that up with the uber delivery rationale if if miss heads is at the point where she's not being honest with not only herself but police and everyone else around her taking willful voluntary actions to seek this seek this individual out and continue to have these confrontations with him. I don't know where we're going from here. Um, I, I really, and this is why she's on probation, obviously, because we're talking about a VOP. So there's even consequences hanging over her head on top of that. I don't know what's happening with Ms. Hetz and why it doesn't seem to be getting through to her that not only is this not a way to behave, but she's hurting herself in ways that are completely avoidable. And I don't know that the work is being done to get to the root of her issues here by her. If I may, you may. I believe when she finally did speak to probation, and I'm trying to verify that, yes, when she did finally speak to probation, she did admit that she let her emotions get the best of her. So I would ask that we follow the recommendation. Ms. Hetz, is there anything you want to say, ma'am, before I impose sickness? No, ma'am. Ms. Hetz? This yes. is your last warning. This is your last warning. Do you understand that, ma'am? Yes, ma'am. If you violate, if you violate again, then you will leave me no choice but to put you in jail. Because I see that you don't respect the court's orders, and you're going to do what you want to do. You got to figure out how to get your emotions in check, and to do what you need to do to, to take care of self. Do you understand that part? Yes. <clears throat> You're reminded to have no contact. You need to enroll in the Crossroads Impulsive Behavior Program within the next um, two weeks. You have 14 days. OK, um, a quick question. Yes, ma'am. Um, do, do I have to pay for this class, too? Or is it free? I don't know the answer to that. You can talk to probation. Okay. You either pay for the class, ma'am, or you can do some jail time. Do you understand I was just that asking that. Yes. The next review will be on April 29th, 2024 at 10 a.m. So I can see whether or not you're in the class and you're doing what you need to be doing. I'll see you then, ma'am. Okay, thank you. You're State of Michigan versus Dayon Monson, case number 22-00743. Preach McDuffie for the people. Assistant Public Defender Sandra White on behalf of D Dayon Munson. Dayon Munson. Thank you, Mr. Munson. <laughs> Mr. David, one second, sir. Mr. David Shan. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. This is Dijon. Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Oh, Shan, oh. are you yes. here for a matter? I thought we had a sentencing with Willie Caldwell this morning. Um, we just received a note. Oh, I'm sorry. The Your Honor, um, he is in warrant status, and we also got an update in regards to a new violation with Mr. Caldwell. Okay. So he's not actually in the docket, Mr. Shan, today. <laughs> I had no idea that there was a violation, and I, he just got out of treatment at Oakdale on Thursday. Oh, he's supposed to be bringing something up to the court. It just came in this morning that he, he was released he, from inpatient Thursday. He reported today and tested positive for alcohol and cocaine, and he's going to jail. Okay. Okay. Thank you. I will let I will let him know. All right. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Now we're back on the day on Monson matter. 
Um, Mr. Monson, as far as your matter is concerned, you're on a violation of probation. It uh, alleges that you tested positive for alcohol. Alcohol was detected by the scram tether, rather, on February 10th, 2024, in violation of the no alcohol condition of your probation. You're entitled to have a hearing in this matter. At this time, it is found that you did violate the terms of your probation again then um, you could have your probation. Well, actually this is a technical violation. The recommendation at this time is for five days in the West Knight County Jail. You understand that, sir? I'm sorry, can you repeat uh, your first few sentences, please? It's alleged that you violated the terms of your probation by testing positive or by having alcohol detected by the scram tether on February 10th, 2024. You're entitled to have a hearing, which you're very familiar with. If you are found to be in violation of your probation again, you can be subject to up to 10 days in the Washtenaw County Jail. The recommendation is for five days at this time. I understand. Have you had a chance to speak with your client regarding this matter, Ms. Uh, White? I have, Your Honor. And what would your client like to do? Mr. Munson, are you still going to admit to the violation? Yes. Okay. We're going to admit to the violation. All right. Please raise your right hand to be sworn. Do you swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to provide will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? So have you got it? Yes. Thank you. You may lower your hand. So is it true that your scrap tether detected alcohol on February 10th of 2024? To my knowledge. Are you satisfied, Ms. McDuffie? Yes, Your Honor. That's right. All right. Sentencing today? Uh, yes, but we do. Well, we are asking that you do not follow the recommendation. I plan to follow the recommendation. May I have the floor, Your Honor, please? There is a few things that Mr. Munson would like the court to know that we hope the court would take into consideration. You can say whatever you like to say at this time. Please. Um, if I may, Mr. Munson, and then if there's something I missed and you wish to speak, okay? I'm sorry. Uh, the client, Mr. Munson is doing his GED with Covenant House. He is doing community service with Food Gathered, and he has signed a release of information. He's making his payments towards the armed course, but it has to be paid in full so he can start the case. And he wants the court to know that if he does go to jail, then he may he will lose his spot at Covenant House, and he will lose his job. But he knew that when he was drinking. May I not have the floor, Your Honor? You may. Thank you. Uh, so. Like, as I said, to my knowledge, yes, there was an alcohol detection. Uh, I was not drinking, though, Your Honor. Uh, I haven't drank since March 2nd of 2023. So in my sworn testament, I was asked that, was there a detection of my alcohol tether? To my knowledge, yes, there was. But I have not drank in Your Honor. Mm -hmm. One moment, please. I need to pass this matter. I'm going to come back to it in a moment. Monson? Yes. Please state your name again, Mr. Monson. Dion Monson. Thank you. All right. Um, Ms. McDuffie, I believe that I left off with you having, uh, not having an opportunity to say what you needed to say. Is there anything you'd like to say in this matter? Your Honor, Mr. Munson has been given more breaks than I think honestly are warranted. Um, he wasn't even sentenced to probation at all back in October. And I recall being very shocked at the time, given all of his bond violations, his pending cases. And I think the lack of the substance abuse and mental health assessments that the court had ordered 
several months ago and we, we I don't even know if we ever did get that information. Everything relating to alcohol with him this entire time has been a complete denial, including not just the scram tether that we had a full hearing on the last time, which he apparently continues to maintain that he did not consume alcohol following that in the current uh, violation and including the open intox in the underlying case. I recall that we had to pass the case for him to review the report and the photo of that uh, bottle of uh, liquor with his attorney during the plea. So Mr. Munson has just absolutely denied basically ever touching alcohol, um, at least in, in, in terms of this case itself and how far back this goes. There is a level of, I don't even know what to call this, quite frankly. Frankly, um, Mr. Munson, but Mr. Munson was told that he could not be released from custody and he never did get them, but he was allowed to go home confinement, violated that a number of times, um, but was still allowed to be out. And, um, you know, we're, we're here today. And so now he's on probation, um, as I, you know, figured we may end up here and is continuing to violate that. I don't know the status of, I know that he, I think, uh, was sentenced to uh, probation on his other um, the, the bond violation regarding the ambulance case and uh, his drug case, I think, was bound over uh, to circuit court. So I don't know where his other matters stand. But clearly, Mr. Munson has a lot going on that I think he can even fully comprehend and appreciate. I know that he, I don't want to say talks a good game because I don't mean to say that in a condescending way. But Mr. Munson has the ability to represent himself very well. My concern is with his insight as to what he's actually representing and where he really is. Thank you. Anything else you'd like to say, Mr. Munson, before I impose sentence? <coughs> Would saying anything make my sentence worse? Potentially. I'm sorry? It could potentially. It could not. That's up to what, that depends on what you say. Okay. Um, in, in regards to all my underlying cases, uh, I have, I've thought about them in regards to, you know, me having to be on these two tethers. I think about them often. I think about them in a way to where I do a lot of my own self-reflection. And I understand that there are a lot of probation terms that I need to do. I need to do all of these things that you guys have put on me. I understand that and I understand the reasoning why. I am taking full responsibility for all of my underlying cases. However, in my efforts to what I do now, I feel that, um, I wouldn't say deserve, but I feel that a consideration, a, a leniency should be considered. Um, I've, I've been baptized recently. I've been working, um, I'm getting into school. As my public defender said, I started making payments towards the armed awareness course. I'm also trying to make payments for the installments through 14B. I've been planning with my probation officer. And with that, I've also been in contact with my probation officer um, almost, I would say almost every other day. Uh, despite me having this detection of alcohol, I've made every single uh, scram tether meetings with uh, Brandon Casey, who is the tether supervisor agent. Um, again, I can just reiterate that these past two detections I have no clue how they might have happened. I haven't drank. Um, in regards to the, I remember the um, the case where you guys had to remind me about the open intoxicant in, in my vehicle. I still remain the case that it wasn't mine and it was my brother's. He was in the car with me at that time. But I understand that I have to take full responsibility because it was in my vehicle and in my cab. Um, I just hope that um, that I, I can be let some leniency here and 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 able to prove you my efforts and my in continuance of my efforts. I apologize for blotching my words and sentences, but I am a bit nervous right now. I understand why you would be nervous, sir. And you've always always spoken very well. And you articulate well, so that's not something you need to apologize for. Thank you. The problem is that in being in this role, one of the things I do is get to listen very closely to how the scram tether works and when a violation occurs. 
and whether it is considered a drinking event or not is a very strenuous process that they they use for the scram pellets and we went through this last time and i hear you saying that you deny it then and you deny it now yes but the evidence points to the fact that you are actually drinking i'm sorry may i say something else your honor please don't mr munson i don't think it's going to help okay It is the sentence of this court that you serve five days in Washington County Jail. Continued on your probation, and you'll do a review in 60 days. Thank you, Your Honor. Sorry, Mr. You're all good. Thanks, Hassan. Can I send a text out real quick? That review will be on May 13, 2024 at 10 a.m. The court will call the Duncan Scott matters, case numbers 17FB1406 and 20W001891A. Paul Barnett on behalf of the township. Assistant Public Defender Sandra White on behalf of Duncan Scott. I'm here. Can you state your name, sir? Duncan Scott. Thank you, Mr. Scott. On December 11th, Mr. Scott was set up a pay with a payment plan of $25 per month. Mr. I did. Scott, oh, sorry. Mr. Scott has made some payments. He made a $40 payment today. I flew up there. I flew up there. I've just started making, trying to make a little extra money doing a little side job. So I've been trying to put, put together and I should receive my license real soon too. I'm hoping on that. All right. I hope you do get them. Yes, ma'am. Mrs. Scott, I'll see you back here on June 10th, 2024 at 10 o'clock a.m. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. you. Have a blessed day. You too. Continue to make your $25 per month payments. I'm gonna make them. I'm gonna figure out how to fly up there. I got an airplane now. All right, sir. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. 